Yo, what's up? Welcome back to another episode of the SWAS. Uh, Saturday college football finished about an hour ago. Uh, great day. Had a lot of fun watching football. Uh, betting wise, I got off to such a hot start. I was five and one. Uh, then heading into the night games, I was seven and four. I was up about 500, 550 bucks. Everything was looking great. I had five bets remaining, right? So I took a couple losses. South Carolina went down in like the third quarter and it came down where I was still going to have a winning day. All I needed was Penn State, West Virginia to stay under 49. That's all I needed. And I was going to have a winning day. And then James Franklin decides to run the ball instead of taking a knee and score a meaningless touchdown with two seconds left or whatever to just f me. Absolutely heartbreaking. Uh, st still pissed off about it. To be fair, that's how I won the Kentucky bet, though, was on a meaningless touchdown. So you can't be mad when it hurts you, but celebrate when it helps you. So it goes around and comes around. It was, it was what are you running the ball? Take a knee whatever let's move on to sunday uh talking lsu florida state in this one what a game probably the best game of the weekend this line opens up florida state catching two and a half points at home here oh no it's not at home it's at a neutral site uh camping world stadium i think it is in florida uh so it's not a home game for florida state total opens up 57 and a half let's go welcome to the source the source hey get the sauce so like i said it opened at florida state plus two and a half and it's still been sitting there at two and a half this whole week public was really heavy on lsu early but that's not the case anymore a lot of florida state action have, has come in last couple days and things are pretty split even now public may be slightly leaning lsu but not much at all so let's talk lsu first uh, obviously brian kelly takes over last year and expectations were high but he somehow exceeded them uh they went 10 and 4 won the sec west beat alabama we all know how the story ended and i'd say the main reason for their success last year is the offense you got to look at the offense uh, back in 2021, LSU's offense ranked 75th or lower in points per game, yards per game, and third down percentage. But bring in Brian Kelly, you bring in Mike Denbrock at OC, you bring in Jaden uh, Daniels from Arizona State, and what do you know, LSU was top 30 in all three of those categories last year. Jaden Daniels threw for over 3,800 yards and 29 touchdowns last season, uh, and he only got better as the year went on. LSU averaged 39 points a game in their last four games of the season, and now they return eight starters on the offense including the entire offensive line star tight end mason taylor and wide receiver one malik neighbors so if you thought expectations for lsu were high last year i mean <laughs> they're thinking national championship or bust this year there really aren't many weaknesses on this lsu offense but if you put a gun to my head and said name lsu's weakness on offense i'd say maybe the over reliance of Jaden daniels uh in addition to the passing numbers i just read off he rushed for 885 yards and 11 touchdowns on the ground as well. Uh, the next leading rusher on the team was running back Josh Williams at just 532. So I think LSU would like to see some more help from the running back room this season. That's probably their weakness, but this op this offense is loaded. When it comes to the defensive side of the ball, uh, things aren't as good for LSU, but they should be okay. Uh, they bring back two major pieces, Wingo, defensive tackle. He was first team all SEC last year, and they bring back Harold Perkins, a linebacker. This dude was an absolute freak in the second half of the season. Uh, if you don't know who that is, you probably have seen him. If you watch an LSU game from week six or seven on, number 40, you know who that is because it seemed like he was making every single play. So that's two huge pieces LSU's defense brings back. That's the good news. Now for the bad news. LSU secondary really got ripped apart this offseason. Uh, they did bring back both safeties. So that there's something. They brought back both safeties, but the corner room is completely gone. LSU lost five corners from last year. Five. And I know it sounds weird to say when you're talking about LSU, but the secondary might be the weakness of the defense this year. I know that's crazy. This is supposed to be DBU. And that new LSU secondary better be ready to play in this matchup because they're going to have their hands full. That dude, Johnny Wilson, is an absolute house on the outside. Those of you that are new to college football, after you're done watching this video, go YouTube some Johnny Wilson highlights from last year. Uh, he's a, a freak. He's six foot seven with breakaway speed. Having inexperienced corners is the last thing. That's the last problem you want to have when you're playing Florida State because someone's got to try to cover this guy. And it's not just Johnny Wilson that LSU's got to worry about here. Florida State was rated first in the FBS. First in estimated returning production. They are returning an estimated 87% of their production from last season. 
first in the country. And it's not like this was a bad team. They went 10 and 3 last year, and they did this with the third most freshmen in the FBS. Third most freshmen. They went 10 and 3, bringing back 87% of their production. Now, all those freshmen are sophomores. All that young talent has another year experience, and Florida State's coming into this season with eight returning starters on offense and seven returning starters on defense. You want to talk about LSU thinking national championship or bust? Florida State's right with them. They're in the same exact boat. Jordan Travis, obviously back at quarterback, and he was excellent last year. He reminds me a lot of Russell Wilson. I always say that. I'm talking about the young Russell Wilson, because now he's kind of become <laughs> a little bit of a <laughs> little bit of a punchline. But I'm talking about the <laughs> I'm talking about the young Russell Wilson, uh, the Seahawks Russell Wilson, Wisconsin Russell Wilson. Uh, Jordan Travis threw 24 touchdowns last year, just five picks. Uh, and when it comes to the run game, he adds another threat. 5.1 yards for carrying seven rushing touchdowns last year. They also got Trey Benson back at running back. He looked great. He averaged 6.4 yards per carry last season. Yeah, Florida State's loaded, man. Now, they did take one huge loss, and it comes on the defensive side. They lose safety Jamie Robinson to the NFL draft. He's on the Carolina Panthers now. But they bring back the other four members of their secondary. So... They lost Jamie Robinson, but he was the only member of the secondary they lost. And you want to know who they brought in through the transfer portal? They brought in that kid Cypress from Virginia. He was second team all ACC last year, and he's projected to be the number one corner in the entire ACC this season. That's who Florida State added through the transfer portal. This team is crazy loaded. Now, in this particular game, there is a mismatch I think we should keep an eye on. Florida State's pass rush. LSU surprisingly wasn't great at protecting Jaden Daniels last year, 107th in quarterback sack rate, 8.78%. That is nightmare fuel because uh, Florida State's pass rush was fourth best in the country with a 10.48% sack rate. Another mismatch to keep your eye on now, personally, I'm not big on third down percentage, but I'll read it off because some people do like it. Uh, it's, it's just too volatile for me. Some teams will be so good on third down, and then out of nowhere, they're so bad on third down. It just It's so up and down. But last year, LSU converted just 40% of their third downs, 76 in the country. Florida State, they converted 51.27% of their third downs. That's fourth best in the FBS. So huge advantage on third downs, according to last year's numbers. That goes to Florida State. Real quick, I feel like I should mention this. Uh, LSU just 2-8 and eight straight up in their 10 matchups against Florida State. 2-7-1 against the spread in those matchups. They're also 1-3 and three against the spread in their last four neutral site games. And they went 1-4 and four against the spread versus non-conference opponents last season. So a lot of negative trends for LSU here. As far as what I'm doing, I, I mean, I'm not fading Florida State. I'm definitely taking Florida State. But I don't think there's a ton of betting value here. This is going to be a great game to watch lsu's loaded and they can definitely win this game but catching two and a half points i'm gonna do it uh so give me florida state plus two and a half may play them on the money line as well uh but i'm definitely on the knolls if you want to check out all the bets i'm placing for the day you want to join the discord all that head over to kylecarms.com or download the sauce network app college football week one continues we got three sunday games and we got a game on monday as well uh we are in the green for the week let's keep that going remember to bet responsibly and i'll talk to you on twitter